How do you know God is a baseball fan? No, it says Bereshit in the big inning. Get it, Abchayim? Bereshit in the big inning. Ugh. God's a baseball fan. Which reminds me, Sharona, there were two diehard baseball fans. They loved, they ate, slept baseball. Two, Yankel and Chaim. And they're getting on in years, and they l breathed baseball. Fabrente baseball fans. So they're getting on in years, they're getting very old, and they still love baseball, and they make a pact. They say whoever dies first has to come back to his friend in a dream and tell them if there's baseball in Olam Haba. You hear this? So, Yankel and Chaye make this pact. Whoever dies first should come back in a dream and tell his friends, dying to know, get it? Dying to know, uh, is there a baseball in Olam Haba? So Yankel dies first, and Chaim is very sad, David. And three days later, who comes to Chaim in a dream? Yankel. So Chaim, so Yankel, Yankel, my friend, tell me, tell me, is there baseball in Olam Haba? So Yankel says, Chaim, I have good news for you and bad news for you. So he says, Yankel, what's the good news? The good news is, yes, Chaim, there is baseball in Olam Haba. The bad news is, Chaim, you're up next. Oh, no. <laughs> Nechama, he's up next. The bad news, okay. You got to take the good with the bad, right, David? Got to take the good with the bad. But anyway, uh, this week's Pasha we read yesterday, God drove the human couple out of Gan Eden and he placed the Kruvim, the Kruvim to guard the way to the Derech Eitzachayim. By the way, Derech Eitzachayim, Medrash Vayikor Rabba tells us that Derech Eretz Kodma La Torah. Every statement Ruvain in the Talmud, well not every, but 95% has to have a source where in the Tanakh. So Rav Tavechik says, how does Vayikra Rabbah know that there is Heretz Kodma La Torah? You look in the Pasha we read yesterday. God placed the Kruvim Lishmor at Derech Eitz HaChayim. What is Eitz HaChayim? Eitz HaChayim. The Torah is Eitz HaChayim. But what is written before Eitz HaChayim? Derech. Derech Heretz, Menschlach Kait, comes before Eitz HaChayim. Rav Tavechik says, that's the source in Vayikra Rabba Perik Tet, Derech Eretz Kodvon Torah, Lishmo Derech, Derech Eretz comes before the Eitz Achayim, David. Some people forget that, okay. But anyway, the Kruvim, Rashi says, who are the Kruvim? Malachi Chabala, angels of terror, or hell's angels, devils. That's what Rashi says here, David. But in Pasha's Truma, Rashi sings a different song, because in Pasha's Truma, where the Torah describes the Keruvim on top of the Ark, Rashi says, those are Kodesh Kadashim. The holiest class of angels are what? Keruvim. And they are therefore represented on top of the Holy Ark in the Holy of Holies. So Rashi, make up your mind, Reb Chaim. Are the Keruvim Malachi Chabala, or are the Keruvim what? Kodesh Kadashim. Rashi seems to what? Contradict himself. Well, Jew answers a question with what? Another question. Not a question. To answer this question, we're going to ask another question. Right, of Chaim? Eat, answer the Kasha, no Kasha. We're just coming out of the high holy days, right, Chava? We said in the Sana Tokev, we said something very strange. When the Sana Tokev, Gidusha Sayom, the Yom Hadin, we said, Umelochim Yecho Feizun, the Malochim were trembling, Kilo Yisku Bianecho Badin. Even the malachim cannot win a favorable judgment against you, God, for, from you, God. Does that make sense, Chaim? We say that Shana the most important prayer, the malachim yuchafez, the malachim are trembling on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, kilo yisku benecho badin, even the malachim have no merit on the day of judgment. Chava, what does that mean? Malachim have no free will. They can't sin even if they wanted to. They ain't got no ego. They have no yetzahara. Why should they tremble? Why will they not win a favorable judgment? They can do no wrong. 
of Chaim. What are they trembling about? Take a pill and lie down. I mean, they have no free will. They can't sin. But why? Why will they not win? They won't win in judgment either. Why won't they win? Did they do a sin? It's impossible. You have a question of my question. But I want to know the answer. Okay, I'll give you the answer. If the answer this question, I will ask. Why will they tremble? They can do no wrong. So the answer this question, I'll ask another one. In Pashis Vayetze, Yaakov has a dream. It says, Umalache Elohim, Olim, the Yordim, Bo. What does that mean? Angels of God are going up and going down. Bo, what does Bo mean? With a vav. Bo means in him. Whether angels are going up or going down depends on the guy in the mirror. Beautiful. Therefore the Malachim tremble because their fate, their destiny depends on what? On me. Awesome, dude. They have good reason to tremble. And that's why they didn't want man to be created. They didn't want their destiny to be handed over to us. That's why they said, more Who needs that? Bo. Bo means in him. Whether angels go up or go down depends on the guy. Depends on Yaakov or Yankel Shmerel. And the Mishnah says in Masechta Avot, Da Malamala Mimcha. Remember that Mishnah? Says of Chaim Volozhin, we're not putting the commas in the right place. Let's eat Grandpa. I don't want to eat my Grandpa. Let's eat Grandpa. Now you're talking, Sonny. What's for dinner? You have to know where to put the commas. Da Malamala, says of Chaim Volozhin. Mishnah Avot, Perik Dalit, Rabbi Yaakov. Da Malamala, comma. If you want to know, the status of the angels above, what are they? Devils or angels? What are they? Mimcha. It's up to you. Wow. It's up to us. What? Why? That's a $64 question. That's the Tselem Elohim that God gave us. The Chelek Elohim Mimao. Ki Chelek Hashem Amo. It's a post in the Vorim 32. Ki Chelek Hashem Amo. God is a portion of what? Rabbi Abraham. Of his people. So the Baltanya says, God gave us Kaviyoko part of himself. So therefore, the destiny of the Malachim depend on us. So when Adam and Chava sin, Chava, not you, when Adam and Chava sin, they turn the Malachi Kodesh HaKadoshim into Malachi Chabala. What are they? Devils or angels, Rabbi Yaakov? Devil or angel? What are they? You make the call. You make the call. It's frightening. The awesome power of a human being, Chavo. Yes? Yes, I guess that means that when we sin, they become... Malak, they become devils. They become devils and they become right? They become... Okay, so let's talk about this more. Okay, there's a lot to talk about here. Let me give you Yaakov Kamenetsky, my Rosh Hashiva's interpretation. There's so many all equally true. The Gemara in Chagiga, page 13, says, The Kruvim, Hoyelhem Partsufim, Shel Yeladim, Zohar Nekeva. What's the significance? That the Kruvim, why do we need to know they had faces of children, a boy and a girl? Said Yaakov Kamenetsky, Zaychatali Gavracha, Hameser, Liyeladim Shalanu. Our children, Imhain, Bekoda Shakadashim, or Chasfishalam, Malachi Chabala, Zetolu Bechinuch, Shehem Kiblu, Aloy Kiblu. The Kruvim have paces of children, they represent what? Our children. Our children, are they holy of holy? Or God forbid what? Devils. 
It depends if they're on top of the ark. What does the ark represent? Torah. Torah values. If our children are attached to the ark, on top of the ark, they are in, inculcated with Torah values, then of course they're Kodesh Kedoshim. But if God forbid our children are detached from the Torah values represented by the holy ark, then Nebuch, they are Malachi Chabala, into drugs or whatever, Loyaleinu, hanging out on the streets, Nebuch. That's for Yaakov Menetzky Zechel Salih of Racha's explanation. But the Rambam tells us, why does the Torah write about the Kruvim? Why is that important to know? Torah is not a history book. We need to know the Kruvim guarded the Garden of Eden. Says the Rambam, the story of the Kruvim is to teach that belief in Malachim is an Ikra of Yehadut. The reason the Torah writes a story to Kruvim, that belief in angels is an Ikra of Yehadut. That's what he says in Mora Nebuchim. Reb Chaim, last time I checked the Ani Mamins, Ani Mamin, it's not there. Holy Rambam, you seem to contradict yourself. Well, he wrote the, he wrote the uh, Parish of Mishnayis when he was 24. So there, in Sanhedrin, he has the 13 Ani Mamins, Chava, I don't see anything about belief in angels. But his Morin of Uchim, which he wrote much later, he writes that the reason the Torah tells him about the Kruv and the Chama is to teach that belief in Malachim is a center, central theme of Yahadut. So if that's the case, how come it's not what? In the Ani Mamins. That's a $64 question, David. So the answer is, it is. One of the Ani Mamins is to believe in Schar and Onish. To believe that what we do matters, positive or negative. That's one of the Ani Mamins, Schar and Onish, right? That's one of the Ani Mamins. I'm here to tell you, when the Rambam says belief in Malachim is an Ikov Yahadut, that's Clark Kent Superman. To believe in Malachim is a center of Yahadus, doctor, because to believe in Malachim is the belief in Schavonish. Hai Nuhach. You don't believe me, Rechaim. I see you down. I'll prove it to you. I'll, no, I'll prove it to you. The Mishnah the says in Avos Perik Dalit, Osa Mitzvah Achat, Koneloi Praklit Echad. You do a mitzvah, you acquire, you create a good Malach. Over Avera Achat, you do an Avera, Koneloi Kateger Echad. You create for yourself a prosecuting Malach. You do a mitzvah, says the Mishnah of us, you create an angel. You do an Avera Chava, I don't mean you, Chas John Kerry, the Balkari, does an Avera, he creates a devil. That's what the Mishnah says. So the Rambam says, Belief in angels is a central theme of Yahadut. That's Chav Onish. What we do has cosmic, eternal repercussions. That's Chav Onish. We create our own heaven or hell. Wow. Depending on our behavior in this world. So belief in angels is actually belief in what, Rabbi Yaakov? Chav Onish. The Rambam doesn't contradict himself. Just different words, the same idea. Malachim are created by our action, positive or negative. That's schar v'onish. What's schar v'onish? Getting a lollipop, winning the lottery, that's schar. Schar is eternal schar. Rechaz v'sholem onish and olam haba is the devil that you created, Leyalein who comes to haunt you. Remember the movie Ghost? It's incredible. The guy was a, was a, uh, went to yeshiva. The guy who directed that movie went to yeshiva. So this is the idea why Malachim tremble. We control their destiny, whether they're Kodesh HaKadoshim Ruvein or Chas Sholom, whether they're what? Malachi Chabala. That's why belief in Malachim or what is a central theme of Yehadut, the Ram of the Mor Nebuchim. And the Shrav Onish, as he says in Perish HaMishnayis, he doesn't contradict himself because Hainu Hach, that's the same, that's the same what? The same idea. Okay. <clears throat> now, yesterday we read about Gan Eden. David, Gan Eden, right? Adam and Chava lived in Gan Eden. Which world was Gan Eden, Chaim? Which world was it? I mixed up. Where is it? Last time I checked the map. We can't find but I think Gan Eden is in Olam Haba, Chava. Where's Gan Eden? Is it in this world or the next? This world. 
You're mixing me up. So when you die, you go to Gan Eden. They lived on this world. Did they? Right? They didn't. So how come when you die, you go to... You go, so where do you go when you die? Okay. So... The Orachai, what? Go ahead, go ahead. Mm. Says the Orachaim Kadosh. fasten your seatbelt, Chava, for this one. Plan A and Plan B. Plan A is that Adam, the human being, should live in both worlds simultaneously. Plan A seldom works out, even for him. Rabbi Avram, it's amazing. Plan A, if Adam would not have sinned, David, we would, he compares it to a two-story mansion. Beam me up and beam me down. Man, according to plan A, was supposed to live in both worlds simultaneously. You hear this? Parallel worlds. That was plan A. A two-story mansion, says the Ramban, where a man could take the escalator, going up, going down. But we sinned. When we sinned, said Orchayim, we created, what's the word, a chasm? How do you say it in English? A chasm. Not a, a chasm. We, we broke the connection between the physical world and the spiritual world, Chava. Now the only way to get from the physical world to the spiritual world is through the Gesher that we call what? Death. So death is not a... Death is Gesher Achayim. The great Kabbalistic word called... That the, death is actually, David, a bridge to eternal life. You see, we broke it. So we created the split between the physical world and the spiritual world. Now the only way to get from here to there is through the bridge that we call death, but it's actually a bridge to life. But God tells the prophet Isaiah, When Mashiach comes, God says, We're going to go back to plan A, David. Beam me up and beam me down. Death will be swallowed up. As you say to every Shiva house, that God will swallow, it's a posik in Isaiah 41, God will swallow up death forever. Says the Ramban, what does that mean? We're going to go back to Adam Kaidam Achet. We won't need the bridge anymore. The chasm will be what? Repaired. The damage of Adam Arishan will be repaired and we're going to go back to Adam Kodam Achet and the bridge that we call death will no longer be what? Necessary. That's Chiyat Beam me up and beam me down. Going up, going down. We all have Adam and Chava's DNA, don't we? What does DNA stand for, Rabbi Abraham? Divine natural ability, right? I think so. We all have their DNA, right? To do it as we please, right? But it tells us what this idea of Kruvim is, the awesome power of a human being. To create angels or chas v'sholem what? Devils. They have good reason to tremble on the Yom Hadin. Their destiny, Chava, their fate, F-A-T-E, depends what? A little old me. Wow. Awesome. So, there is a parallel world out there, David. I think it's called the fifth dimension. Right? The spiritual world, concealed from our physical eyes. Right? So, how do we tap into that world? Well, that's what Kabbalah is all about. That's what Kabbalah is all about. How to tap in the unseen spiritual world. Hmm. The essence of Kabbalah is that we cast a giant shadow. Remember that movie? We are created in the Tselem Elohim. What does Tselem mean? But Tsel, it's a puzzle can tell him. 121. Hashem Tzilcha. God is your shadow. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of man? Shadow, no. Mm, me and my shadow. There's a post who can tell him, Hashem Tzilcha, that God is what? God is our shadow. Wow. Oh, we cast a giant shadow, right? Whatever you do, 
positive or negative, causes a reaction in the Olam Anistar. What's the Olam Anistar mean? The hidden world. The Olam, Olam Abba. The shadow is a reminder of that idea. Whatever we do causes a similar reaction in Olam Anistar, like your shadow in Shemayim. Every act that we do has a similar reaction in Shemayim, positive what? Or David or what? Negative. Frightening. It's amazing. There's an amazing Gemara in the Sech Techul in Reb Chaim. Ein ha-malachim omrim shira lamala ad she Yisrael omrim shira lamata. Nechama, you know Hebrew, what does that mean? The malachim above have no right to sing praises to God, Chava. At she Yisrael omrim shira lamata until we what? It's up to you. They're on hold. They can't do anything until we push the buttons. It's frightening. Now you know why they didn't want us around. Didn't they say to God, who needs them? It's incredible. Wow. Psalm 121, Hashem Tzilcha. God is your shadow. The Malachim have no right to say Shira. Until we give them the signal, the okay. Wow. The fate of the malachim hangs in the balance, David. They have good reason to tremble when? On the Yom Hadin, don't they? They have good reason to tremble on the Yom Hadin? Right? Pretty amazing. Yeah, but, but Gemara Chulin says they have no right to... Sh ain't a mal they can only mention God's name after Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. After three times. We say Hashem Yimloch Lalam Void. We mention God's name right away. They have no right to mention his name without first Kadosh. 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 Now you're warmed up. Now you can say God's name. We go right into it. Hashem Yimloch Lalam Void. And they are not permitted to mention his holy name until they warm up. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. So the awesome power of a human being to control the destiny, Chava, what? Not just me. Da ma'ala ma'ala, kama. Mimcha. Chaim v'lozhin. Malach elhim olim, the yordim, says the Baal Shem Tov, bo. You make the call. Yes, David. Go ahead. Ooh, David Harrell is cooking with gas. Who sends Abraham to kill his son? Who stops him? Why does the Malach stop him? Why did the Malach stop him? Why didn't God stop him? Why did God send an angel? God didn't send an angel. Beautiful, David. How does the Mishnah know, Masech to Avot, when you do a mitzvah, you create an angel? Every statement in the Talmud, not every, 94% of the statements in Talmud have to have a source where? How, 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 how does the Talmud and Ovos know that when you do a mitzvah, you create what? The Akedah. God didn't send the angel. The angel was created by Abraham's mitzvah. So the Malach said, you don't have to go further. You did the mitzvah. What's proof? Hello. You don't have to go further. The mitzvah's done. What's the mitzvah? What's the proof the mitzvah's done? I'm here. Because Ron thought he stopped before he was supposed to do it. The malach proved to him that his deed was done. The mitzvah was created. Otherwise, the malach wouldn't be there. God didn't send the malach. The malach was created by the mitzvah of the Akedah. Because machshava tova, because Since Abraham and Yitzchak wanted to do the Akedah, in God's eyes, it's what, David? It's a done deal. What's the proof? The Malach. He says, B nishvati. What does B mean? What does B mean in Hebrew? Me. Me. He's pointing to himself. Why is he pointing to? Hello, I'm here. I, you did the mitzvah. I'm living proof. B nishvati. Me is living proof you did the mitzvah, Abraham. You don't have to go any further. It's only a test. Very good, David. Very good. Now, where was I? 
Uh, so what we do has what? Cosmic repercussions. Positive or negative? Time, this goes... Cosmic consequences. Cosmic consequences. This idea is so powerful, Sharona. Remember the burning bush? Remember the burning bush? Before the burning bush. Um, yeah. Where was I? At the burning bush... God appears to him at the snare, and Moshe hides his face, right? Remember? Moshe is afraid to look, right? Remember? Check the text. In Pasha's Kisisa, Moshe Rabbeinu says, show me your glory. So God tells him, according to the Medrash, when I wanted to show myself to you at the burning bush, you hid your face. Now you want to see me? Too bad. Rabbi Yaakov, it's a medrash. Is God taking revenge? When I wanted to show myself, you hit your face. Now, now, you want to see me? No. Is God taking revenge? What's the idea? No. Chava, Hashem Tzilcha. God is what? God is what? Your shadow. By the burning bush, it's not tit for tat. Moshe wasn't ready by the snare. So when he refused to look, he closed up that portal in Shemayim as well. Mida connected Mida. What we do has cosmic eternal repercussions. So God says, I can't show you my face now. You close that door. Incredible. He opened it by, refusing by not looking, you close that door. So now it's too late. Now it's too late. Lillian, it's not a punishment. It's not a punishment. Hashem tzilcha. Mida keneged mida. Now this idea goes so far, Reb Chaim. In Pasha Shlach. Vayifko on balaylahu. The Moroccan came back, Rabbi Yaakov, with a very terrible report. Remember? They cried that night. Gemur in Tainus 29. Ota halayla, Tisha Bav Hayav. Mr. Shapiro, right? That night was Tisha Bav. Omer HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Atem bechitem lechinam. You cried for nothing. Pizgadzev is beautiful. Rechavi is beautiful. What are you crying for? Were you foolish? Vani koveya lechem bechia ledorot. Oh, I will establish for you, you have good reasons to cry. Throughout the generations, the worst atrocities, Rabbi Yaakov, took place when? Tisha B'av. People don't know that Auschwitz began to operate on Tisha B'av. Spanish Inquisition on Tisha B'av, World War I, which started all the pogroms. All you check Jewish history, Oto Halayla, Tisha B'av, the worst pogroms, and persecutions for the Yidden took place when, Chava? On Tisha B'av. Why? Is God taking revenge? What does it mean? You cried for nothing, so I will give good reason to cry. So we created demons. Beautiful. It's not a punishment. The awesome power of a human being. When we cried for nothing, we created that negative energy that has cosmic repercussions. It's unbelievable. It's not a punishment. Bechiel Dorot is not a punishment. It's a tikkun. Each and every tear that we cried now brings the Mashiach closer. Wow. Hashem Tzilcha. God is your shadow. Pretty amazing, huh? The end of the Gemara Makot. The rabbis were taking a walk on the Temple Mount. I wouldn't try it today, David. They get stoned. Right? Now, with Mickey Sunshine. It, Mickey Sunshine, she was in the old city, Shmini Atzeres. And the Arab threw a rock at her. She had to go to the doctor today. So, Never. the police arresting uh, you. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You're right. But anyway. That's right. That's right. You're right. So anyway, uh, 
The end of Sefta, Sefta Makot says, the rabbis were taking a walk on the Temple Mount. And they began to cry. They saw the two-legged terrorists, right? And Rabbi Kiva laughed. So, they asked him, uh, why are you uh, laughing? A Jew answers a question with one. The question. So they ask, why are you crying? What are you, why are we crying? We see that two-legged terrorists are what? Throwing rocks on the Temple Mount. We shouldn't be crying. So Rabbi Kiva said, that's exactly why I'm what? Laughing. If God can be so kind to the wicked, can you imagine the great good he will give to the righteous? Rabbi Kiva always marched to a different drum. They cried, they saw the terrible tsars on the Temple Mount. Terrorists are throwing rocks and petrol bombs to the police. They burned the police station on Temple Mount. So the rabbis cried and Rabbi Kiva laughed. The rabbis saw now. Rabbi Kiva looked into the future. If God can be so kind and good to the wicked terrorists, now, can you imagine the great good in store for us when Mashiach comes? Ah, uh, what? He saw all the suffering, right? Because the tears of grief will become tears of joy. The tears of grief will become tears of joy. Rabbi Kiva saw that. We have to cry. But we have to know that all of our tears of grief will one day become what? Tears of joy. That eternal promise. Rabbi Kiva was way ahead of his time. We can't be on that level. The other rabbis were not at that level. Rabbi Kiva was unique. But the prophets also said you can cry. And cry right. And, cry. and if that prophecy would come true, so would the others. That's right. It's certainly if the prophecy of what? of evil comes true, and how much more the prophet, we know God's midah of, of, of toiva is what? 500 times greater than his midah of punishment. So if his punishment came true, to every iota, David, every T, every dot, and did it come true, so how much more will his goodness come true? When the time comes, stay tuned, Rabbi Yaakov, 500 times greater. So this idea, eight sadas tovara, Chava, what does that mean? Eitz Adas Tovara. What is knowledge? What is the internet? Is it good or evil? What is it? Neutral. You make the call. You make the Eitz Adas Tovara. Is knowledge good or evil? Is the internet good or evil? You make the call. You go to rabbishfrecha.com. Then it's told. But chas v'shalom. You go to those Loyalenu websites, Loyalenu. Eitz Hadat. Internet, knowledge, it good or evil. We have to decide how to use it. Wow. Kabbalah helps us to choose correctly. Kabbalah teaches that we create our own reality, David. Positive or what? Negative. Negative. You make the call. It's unbelievable. The awesome power of human being. It's frightening what God invested in us. Part of himself. The Tzelem Elohim. The Chelek Elohim Imar. Ki Chelek Hashem Amo. It's Apostle in Job 31. Chelek Hashem. Chelek Elohim Imar. Eul 31. Ki Chelek. Chelek Elohim Imar. You can look it up. Job 31. Ki Chelek. That every Yid. Job wasn't Jewish, right? Chelik alahaim imal, he says. Based on the apostle. You know, everything in Tanakh has to have a source. We're in the Chumash, right? So it's a apostle in Deuteronomy 32. Chelik Hashem Amo. God is a portion of every one of his people. And the Baal Tanya says, right? Mamash. Wow. So we create, or God forbid, Rabbi Yaakov, we create or, or destroy, just like God. Wow. Be very careful. When God created Adam and Chave, what did he tell them? Be very careful, don't destroy my world. I beg you, don't destroy my world. That's what God said. I'm giving you the key to create or destroy. Look how much I think of you. Don't let me down. Chava.
Should we let him down? Mm. David, it's unbelievable. There's amazing Mishnah of old Perik Bet. Eze derech tova. The Mishnah says of Yaakov, what's the derech tova? So many uh, Tanoim say, what's the best way? One Tana says, ayin tova. What does ayin tova mean? What? One Tana says, ayin tova, a good vision. You have 20 20 vision, right? You don't need glasses? Hawkeyes. No, David, no. What does ayin tova, a good oik? What does it mean? A faginer. How do you say it in Yiddish? Ayin tova, what does it mean? To look ahead. Right? Or, no. Rab Shimon says, Haroya Sanolad. One Tana says, the best road in life, Chava, is to have a good eye. Rab Shimon argues, and he says, no, Haroya Tanolad. The best meat in life is to foresee the future consequences of your actions. I'm here to tell you that there's no machlaikis, Ruvain. Eilu vi eilu divrel him chayim. And two Tanoim disagree, David. They're what? They're both right. How could they both be right? You're also right. <laughs> so one Tana says, I ain't tova. It's a Mishnah, Ovot Perik Bet. But Shimon says, Haroyata no lad. Foresee the consequences of your actions and behavior. And I'll prove to you that I ain't tova, Haroyata no lad is what? Same thing. Fasten your seatbelts. In Pasha's Bahaloischa, Moshe Rabbeinu begs his father-in-law, the Yoyme Moshe of the Chovav, No simanachnu el amoko nashomer Hashem. We are traveling to Pisgah Zeb. I mean to... Where you live? Armon and Letzid. Rechavio. Kiyat Moshe. We're traveling to the place which God promised. L'chuatonu, come with us. Jethro, leave Borough Park. I mean, leave Midian. Come along with us. Ki Hashem diber tov al Yisrael. God spoke only good on Israel. Join us, Yisrael. Yisrael said, I'll be a good yid in Borough Park. I'll be a guy or live in, live in the where? In the five towns. Why not? Moshe begs him. You want to be a complete Jew? Join us. Come to Israel. Ki Hashem diber tov al Yisrael. And that toy is only where? Not Borough Park. I mean, uh, Lakewood. What does Yisrael say, Sharona? This is passive. No, I'm not going. I'm going back to my land. I can be Haredi where in Lakewood or in Crown Heights. That's what he said. And, he, and Moshe continues to plead with him. Please don't leave us. Let him alone. No. What does he want from him? I'll not. It doesn't give up, Moshe. I'll not. Please don't leave us. You are our eyes. What do you mean, you are eyes? What is he, Tanto? What do you mean, you are our eyes? We need a scout? Follow that cloud, Sharona, right? Rashi says, we need him what? To be a scout? What do you need a scout for? Kushbochu is what? Follow that cloud. Where the cloud goes, we go. What do you mean we are eyes? Yisroi did, didn't have an eye in Tova. Moshe says, show me your good eye. You're our eyes. You can't leave us. Because Moshe had a premonition. The very next Pasha after Baloischa is what? Shlach. Koinki dinki, Reb Chaim? Who wore the Maraglim? Roshe b'nei Yisroel heima. Each one was a super Haredi chief rabbi. The Ramban says something amazing. Their names are listed in what order? Not according to the tribes. In order of Torah scholarships. You have three Maraglim that are listed before Yeshua Benun. That means at least three of them were greater Torah scholars than whom? Yeshua. And Kalev. So you're talking about superstar Rosh Hashanah Yisrael. How could they turn their backs on Eretz Yisrael? How is it possible? Because they saw what they wanted to see. 
They saw the great miracles of Hashem, but they saw last week in Pasha's Baha'u'llah, the great Haredi Ger Tzedek. Yisroi had a Pasha in the Torah named after him, Mr. Shapiro. I don't have a Pasha. Moshe has no Pasha named after him, right? There's no Pasha, it's Moshe. But there's a Pasha, it's Yisro. He became a super Haredi Ger Tzedek. And he said... That you could be a super Haredi where? In Midian. In, I mean in Lakewood. The Maraglim saw that he's not interested in making Aliyah. You could be super Haredi in the Midbar. So why should we make Aliyah? A good Haredi Jew in Chutzloretz. The attitude of the Maraglim brought tragic disaster on Am Yisrael to this very day. We're still paying for it. Yisroi didn't have an eye in Tova. Because he didn't see the Noilad. Yisro, you're a role model. You have a passionate Torah named after you. The people are looking at you. If you reject Eretz Yisrael, what are you saying? It's not important. It's not important, Israel. You could be a good from Yid in Barapa. The Miraglim picked up on that. If it's good for Yisro, and he's super Haredi, what do you want from me? Chava. Moshe pleaded, have an eye in Tova. And Rav Shimon says, an eye in Tova is a royat anolad. And Yisroi Nebuch didn't foresee the tragic consequences of his rejection of Eretz Yisrael. He didn't foresee. He didn't have an eye in Tova. His vision was blocked. I think he had spiritual cataracts. No, spiritual cataracts. Thank you. What we do, David, has... Eternal repercussions, especially a great man like Yisroi. The Yidden saw that he's rejecting Eretz Yisroi. Moshe pleads with him, Nachamol, and Nachamol. And he says, no, I'm going back home. There are plenty of Koilal and where in Lakewood. There are plenty of Koilal in Lakewood. He showed that Israel is not important. Who needs it? And that put a bee in the bonnet. Is that the right, a bee in the bonnet or what? of the super from Rosh Ben Yisrael. We can be good Yidin in the Midbar. Oh, let's go back to Egypt, they said. Cairo, right? A nice, a nice synagogue, the Cairo Geniza. Their attitude, the Maraglim, brought tragic disaster, David. We're still paying for it to this very day. So you have to have an eye in Tova, which is a Roya Tanolad. What we do has eternal consequences, positive or what? And therefore, we're just coming out of Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, they brought two goats. One La Shem, one La Zazel. They both had to be what? Exactly. No, one was not sacrificed. One was pushed over a cliff. They both had to be the same exact color. Chava. Same exact color, same exact price. One went to God, and one went over a cliff. What's it all about? It's a Pesach in Kohelet. We just read it, right? Kohelet. Zeh l'umat zeh osor lehim. Zeh l'umat zeh osor lehim. What does that mean, Rebchayim? It's a Pesach in Kohelet. We just read it on Shad. This, parallel to that, did God create. So the Medri says, that's the Soyer Lashem and the Soyer Lazozel. God created Toy Vara. Eitzadas Toy Vara. They both tempt you. They both call out to you. Will you dedicate your life to Hashem or Chas Vishalom? God forbid to what? Azozel. A life of Kiddusha. Lashem, positive spiritual energy, or what? A life of Tumah, Lazozel, negative spiritual energy. We have to choose either for Hashem or Chas Vishol Amat. Over the cliff. That's Eight Sadas Tovara. Kabbalah helps us to choose correctly. Kabbalah teaches that we create our own reality, David. Positive or God forbid, uh, or God forbid, uh, negative. Chava, the Soyer Lashem was killed, died, right? 
And the Soya Lazozel also died. Everybody dies, but when you're alive, you can choose how you're going to live. You dedicate your life to Hashem? Or chas v'sholem? To what? To the disco crowd, or what? Or whatever there, what? In the end, we all die. But while we're alive, we choose whether Hashem, or chas v'sholem, or lazozel. That's the Eitz Hadas, Chava, Eitz Hadas, Tov we have to choose between what? Good and evil. Because if we wouldn't have that choice, Rabbi Yaakov, we wouldn't be human. If we wouldn't have that choice, we would be what? Robots. And God has plenty of robots in heaven. What are they called? Malachim. God doesn't want puppets. What does God want? Partners. I want to welcome my sister, my brother-in-law from uh, Borough Park. Chai and Eli. Ruchem Aboyim. They came all the way from Borough Park just to hear this year. <laughs> see that? They'll be on TV also. See that? Eventually they'll make Aliyah. When Mashiach comes, right? I'm waiting. Make Aliyah. Bezat Hashem. Yeah. So that's the message of what? Of the, of the Kruvim. Whether they're devils or angels. Whether they're heavenly angels. Or whether they're what? Hell's angels. You make the call, right? After Adam and Chava sinned, God made them kosnat or jackets of leather. But why? They were already wearing the latest fashion. They were wearing fig leaves, right, Ellie? Why did God have to make for them kosnat or jackets of leather? They already were dressed in what? In the latest fashion, fig leaves. It's very in this year, fig leaves. So why did God make kosnat or with an eye in jacket, jackets of leather? Because when they sin, they turn the kruvim into malache chabala. What does malache chabala mean, Eli? Hell's angels. What do hell's angels wear? Leather jackets. Vroom, vroom. Don't you get it? I'm not making this up. Their sin turned the Kruvim into Malachi Chabala. Malachi Chabala literally means Hell's Angels. Hell's Angels wear Kosnat Or. Don't you get it? Remember the fans? Leather jackets. Isn't that incredible? No coinky dinky. What? The mother required an animal sacrifice. No. Where did God get the leather from? I don't know where he got it from, but why leather jackets? That's the symbol of hell's angels. Why not a suede jacket? Why did God have to make to them leather jackets? It's amazing. The awesome power of a, of a human being. Any uh, questions or comments? Yes? Can you explain that? I don't understand. The Kruvim, which were so holy, are now wearing leather jackets. Can you explain that? No, they weren't wearing leather jackets. Why did God make leather jackets for Adam and Chava? Because their sin turned the Kodesh Kadoshim angels into Malachi Chabala. Malachi Chabala literally means hell's angels. What's the symbol of a hell's angels? A leather jacket. I'm being, f f what's the word? Fashifis. 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 But they're no kawinky dinkies, right, Sharona? They're no kawinky dinkies, right? Why did they need leather jackets? God, God, they were already wearing fig leaves, the latest fashion. So I want to say, my humble opinion. What? Leather jackets. Cost not or means leather jackets. I don't know. Uh, but that's the Malachi Chabala. The Malachim were Kodesh Kadoshim. But when Adam and Chava sinned, they turned the Malachi Kodesh Kadoshim into Malachi Chabala. Well, we control their destiny. That's the, that's the point of the shit. We control their destiny. Therefore, they have a good reason to tremble on the Yom Hadin. Pretty okay, not to say every, but it looks like the Kruvim are. And, and Baal Shem Tov says, Valache Elohim, Olim, Biyordim, Bo. Eli, what does Bo mean? Beis Vav. In him. Whether angels go up or down depends on him. Who's him? The guy in the mirror. Okay, I'm telling you about Shem Tov. Okay. And Dama Alamala, Kama Mimcha. 
you want to know the status of the angels above, mimcha. So, hopefully that uh, we're doing what we have to do. So, with the malachim, and once again, what? Kodesh Kedoshim, right? Or Kodesh Kedoshim. And the Medjish does say that Adam and Chava did tshuva. And they got closer to Hashem than ever. Because the Mokim Shebalo Tshuva Omed, Atzadi Goma Lo Yochal Amot. So the Medjish said that Adam and Chava did tshuva. And Mimela, they turned the Malachi Chabala back into what? Heavenly angels. That's the greatness of human being. That we do tshuva, we can change the devils, devil or angel, through the power of tshuva, David, we can turn those devils back into what? Angels. The awesome power of what? Of, uh, of tshuva. Any other questions? Right. No, God said if you eat the fruit. See, Adam added, call a moist of Gorea. God, Chava added. Adam added to Chava. Right. He misled her. Right. God never said, don't touch the tree. Right. God says, don't eat that tree. So Chava added on, and she said, don't touch the tree, because Adam misled her. The Nachash pushed her against the tree. And he says, just like you won't die from touching, you won't die from eating. So the Talmud in Sanhedrin says, call a moisiv Gorea. If you add on to the Torah, Chava, you're making it worse. He gave her false information, Adam did. He misled her. Therefore, it's called the sin of Adam, not the sin of Chava. He misled her. The husband misled her. Ezer Kenegdo. Your wife is a helper against you. Seems to be a contradiction. If she's a helper, then how is she against you? If you do good, she's a helper. If you do bad, she's against you. But my Rebbe Rapam Zatal said, no, a wife helps a husband by being against him. Ooh. Only a wife can point out the character flaws and faults and defects of the husband. Nobody else can do that. Ooh. She helps him by being against him. No one else can rebuke him. No one sees him behind closed doors, only the Bible. So she's qualified to help him by being against him by pointing out his character flaws and defects, thereby helping him by being against him. And therefore, Isha's gematria musar. Eli, you're good in gematria. Wife in Hebrew is gematria musar. The job of a wife is to rebuke her husband. But Isha's also gematria devash. Right. Honey, I'm home. That's right, your wife is a honey. You, right. Honey, I'm home. Aleph Shin Hei is Gematria 306. That's Gematria Musar. But the rebuke has to be done in a devash way. If the wife doesn't rebuke in a sweet way, it's counterproductive. Ah. So Musar is a middle name, but also honey is a middle name. The, the job of a wife, Reb Chaim, is to what? Give Musar to her husband, but in a devash way. Otherwise, it's counterproductive. She doesn't need Musar. She's a, a, she's a Bina Yetera. She's a Bina Yetera. Aleph Shin Hei, who's good in Gematria. Wife is Gematria 306. That's Gematria Musar, rebuke. That's her job to rebuke you. But also, it's Gematria Devash. Dalit Bet Shin. Kowinki Dinky? The Musar can only be productive, David, from the wife if she does it what? In a sweet, honey way. Otherwise, it's what? It's uh, counterproductive, right? And therefore, under the chuppah, the wife circles the husband. Why? Why does she circle him? She's fencing him in. Don't stray. David, she's fen that's why his wife, the, hus the, the husband is dizzy. Under the <laughs> she circles him. She's fencing him in. And that's why the husband breaks the glass Ellie under the chuppah. The it's the last time he's going to get to put his foot down. <laughs> Don't you get it? You know what he should say under the chuppah? What? Say, Don't, fence Don't fence me in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Toda. <laughs>